Welcome to the Occam Learning Lab. Today, we will be going over the WordPress plugin, WP Inventory, and how to use it. The first thing to using the WP Inventory plugin is to make sure that you've gone to the plugins, add new, and installed the WP Inventory plugin. If you need help on installing plugins, be sure to view our video on plugins and plugin management. Once the plugin is installed and activated, you'll notice that WP Inventory will appear in the navigation to the left. Under the WP Inventory nav navigation item, we have WP Inventory, Inventory Items, Categories, Labels, Display, Settings, and Add-ons. To get started, simply click the WP Inventory nav item in the left or you can click the sub nav item WP inventory and that'll take you to the quick start guide which takes you through the steps necessary to get the program up and running. First is to set up your inventory categories. Inventory categories let you categorize information for example hats, t-shirts, mugs, pens. Those are categories of items or you could say promotional items um, I have the client that we're using here has two categories, heavy equipment sales and heavy equipment parts. Next is to configure the settings. Next is to configure the labels. The labels are used in the display on the category page and the item detail page. There are two basic views with the WP inventory system and we'll be taking a look at that. Next is to set the display options. This is how things are displayed. Then you can add inventory items. If we go to inventory items, you'll see that items have already been entered into this system. And when you go to the individual item pages, you can see the information that was entered in for each of these items. All right, so going back to the WP inventory, the first thing is to set up your inventory categories. When setting up the categories, it's important to know ahead of time what you want to use for your categories. For example, I said on this site, we're using heavy equipment parts and heavy equipment sales. You can add a category by simply clicking add category. You're going to enter a category name, a description, and a sort order. Sort order from 1 to 999, with the lowest number being on top of the list. Save the category, it will add it to the list. We're going to hit cancel here and go back to the list. And then you see that the items will show up in the list here, category and sort order showing. To edit any of the items at any time, simply click on edit or to delete the items or categories, simply click delete. The next step in the startup process after inventory categories is configuring the settings. Under settings, you're gonna set various responsibilities, roles and settings for the WP inventory plugin. First is permission. Minimum role to add or edit items. You can set any of your users, for example, if you want editors, contributors, or authors to be able to add items, you can set that up here. Allow users to edit. This allows users to edit either their own items or any items within the system. Next, under general settings, use SEO URLs. This creates URLs at the top of the screen that are friendly that actually show the item title as the description or for the page in the URL up here. This helps with search engine optimization as the link up here then relates to the content of the page topically. The SEO endpoint allows you to modify the URL so that a, a dominant keyword will appear on every URL. Use media fields. Setting this to no still allows images, just not additional media, such as videos and audio and other media. Items per page, 20. This is how many items will display on each category page. Date format and time format settings. Currency format settings. Where the currency goes, if there are thousands, separators, decimal separators, currency precision in decimal places, Reserve settings. This, on each of the item detail pages, there is a form that users can fill out to reserve an item, which then sends an email to the email set here in the settings, allow, letting the 
admin know that an item has been reserved or requested. So allowing visitors to reserve items places this form on each of the item detail pages. Ask for quantity when reserving. This is if you have an item that's a multi-order item. Decrease quantity and system on reserve. With each of the items, when you enter them, you can enter a quantity of the item so that you can keep track of inventory numbers actually within the system. Then it goes through to required fields within the form, whether you require the name, the address, city, state, zip, phone, email, or message. You typically want to set fields to required such as name, phone, and or email so that you're certain to get information on the requester and that allows you to contact them. Next is image tools, rebuild image thumbnails. If you change size settings or modify things like that, it may be necessary to go through and uh, check this, save the settings, which it will then go through all of the images used in the system and rebuild the thumbnails and views to be the appropriate size. So once you're finished with the settings, you click Save Settings, and you will receive an alert at the top of the screen that tells you that the settings were saved. All right, going back to the WP Inventory main screen, quick start guide, we've gone through inventory categories, we've checked the settings. Next is labels. Again, labels will be used to create the item pages as well as the item displays. And you'll notice these are standard inventory items such as category, date added, date updated, and the entire list goes on. And you can at any time click edit labels and then you can add and remove and select whether items are used or not. You see the items down here at the bottom are checked out and so they're grayed out since they're not used. Some items are always on and you, you can't do anything about it. The date added, the date updated, the name, number, sort order are always required for the system. Other than that, all of the other items are modifiable, and even the required items, you can change the way that the label displays in the system. This will make more sense when we look at entering items into the system. So next on the list, after labels, is set the display option. When we go over to the display options, we will see three columns. The first one shows all available fields or labels Next is show in listing. This is the category listing page or the main page of the inventory. Next is show on detail. This is when you click any of the items in the category list and it takes you to the item detail. You can add and remove items by simply dragging and dropping and moving them around. You can set the order that the items display in by simply dragging and dropping and moving them around. Next, after you scroll to the bottom, you'll see that you have various options such as show labels in the listing, display listing as a table, image size in listing, show labels on detail, and image size in detail. Now please understand that if you change the listing or detail image size, it's not necessary to go back to the settings and have it recreate all of the images. This merely is selecting out of the available images, image sizes in WordPress, which one you're going to use for each of these sections. So once you're finished, as with everything, don't forget to click Save Settings. And again, you will get on an alert at the top of the screen if your settings have saved successfully. So going back to the WP Inventory Quick Start Guide, you see our final item here is to add inventory items, which takes us to the Inventory Items section. And you see here I have two items entered into the system. And to add a new item, you simply click Add Inventory Item. It's ideal before you go to add an inventory item to have all of your images collected and already sized, as well as copy and other information necessary for the listing already collected. We're going to look at editing one of these items to see what fields were entered. And the Add Inventory Item is going to give us the same display screen, just with all fields empty. So clicking Edit on this first item, you see that I'm able to enter a number, such as a SKU or serial number, the name of the item, the category that it goes in. And you see here I have, of course, heavy equipment parts and heavy equipment sales, a description, 
which the description field is draggable so that you can make it larger and actually see the entire content of what you have. Size, manufacturer, make, model, year, quantity. So for example, the quantity here is one. Price, now when you enter the price, it's not necessary to enter the dollar sign or decimal places or commas. That The system will do that for you automatically. Next is to enter the images and realize that the first image that you use will be the featured image for this item in the category listing where it lists uh, items. In the category listing where it shows multiple items, this is the image that will show there. When you go to the item detail page, it will show all of the images. Next is the media and remember our option in the settings to change media. Here we can add media such as videos, if you have, want to show a video of an item working or in action, you can add media. And of course, sort order, if you want to change where an item is listed in its category sorting. Once you've entered all this information in, you simply save the item. You'll receive an alert that your inventory item was saved. That was the 1999 Caterpillar. And now if we go over to the page, go to our parts and equipment section. I've already put the short code on the page for the inventory manager. And you see here it shows heavy equipment and parts. And here's where the short code was placed in and it creates this table showing the name of the item, price, the image, and the description. This is a raw display. None of this has been modified with CSS or customized in any way. However, each of the sections of the table, if we go to inspect element, for you advanced users, you'll notice that it has good uh, class names for the sections, such as inventory item one, inventory ID, that allows you to go in and modify every single section of, of the table here and how it displays. For the rest of you who don't do advanced coding in CSS, the display of your inventory is going to be largely a function of your theme. So whatever theme you have installed, how it handles certain things such as tables and labels and displays and copy, that's how it's going to be handled within the display. Right here you see just the default display based on the theme that is installed for this website. All right, so when you click on an item, you, you can see that the name, the price, the image, are all clickable and if you click on those it will take you to the detail page for that item. Now when I scroll down again remember this is the default display it's showing labels and the quantity under each of the labels and there's not much customization to it it's pretty basic and straightforward so you see that I have the item name the main image price description manufacturer, make, model, and the additional images for this. And here at the bottom, we see the reserve this item form. Again, remember, all of these have excellent CSS labels and are able to be easily customized in any WordPress install. That's the basic overview of the WP Inventory system. At any point, if you have items that sell out or change or you want to get rid of them, you can delete them. And as always, if you have any questions about this or any of our other videos, please feel free to contact us at info at occamonline.com. That's O-C-C-A-M-Online.com. As always, thank you for watching our videos.